Hey everybody, I know it's been a while since my last video, but uh, yeah, I've just been busy. I've been doing other stuff, been working on the other channel, all that stuff. So uh, I wanted to get back into this with some minimalist video. I got an iPhone 12 mini and I want to talk about it. Uh, before I get into it, I just wanted to quickly mention why I chose a smartphone. And I was initially looking to do a smartphone and I thought that would be a perfect thing because I'm trying to get away from phones and everything like that. But there's certain tools on smartphones that I really, really would like to have, such as a really nice camera just in my pocket, uh, audio books, and you know, a pedometer to check my steps every day, things like that. Uh, otherwise, I try to keep it really, really bare and very, very minimalist. I'm not just designing it minimally, I'm approaching it with a minimalist attitude. And I think if you look at it that way, you'll start to understand why I'm doing everything, I'm trying to make it super functional and utilitarian device that has very high-end tools that I want, such as the nice camera and just a sleek, powerful system that's gonna last. Uh, small form factor is perfect for me. I've never had a problem with the battery. Uh, the phone is excellent, it's a great phone. It's my first iPhone. Uh, there are some, there's a lot of things I will say that I miss from Android, but other than that, it's just great. So I hope you enjoy this walkthrough. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's not waste any time. Let's go right into it with well, the first thing that you see is the lock screen. Now, I don't really know how to get around this. This is my first iPhone. So if you know how to do it, uh, I would love to know. But with the Android, you could always have a fingerprint or a location detection of some sort. So you don't have to see any lock screen. And for me, I've shut off Face ID, shut off passwords. I've tried location stuff, but for some reason, every time I turn on the phone, I have to see this lock screen. I don't know why I can't just go into the phone. Because of that, I wanted to do something special with the lock screen. So I made a wallpaper that would look like it was almost black, but it had just a little bit of a texture. It's a very, very subtle texture. Now I will uh, leave both of my wallpapers and a few more in the description that I've made for you, you can free to download all that stuff. So, all right, so the first thing you'll notice is everything's in grayscale. And I've done this for a few reasons. The first is because with Apple iPhones, you can't customize the icons. Not really, uh, apparently in 14.3, you'll be able to, but right now you have to use a shortcuts app, which darts to the app before it opens the app, which just seems kind of a waste of time and just, it's just kind of silly to me. I want it to work or not at all. So that's the first thing. The next thing is when I'm messaging people, I can't figure out how to change a color in the messenger so that everybody's like changing from blue to green or something. I would love it if I was everybody was just black or green. The blue is really upsetting tone to me. It's just jarring on the eyes. Uh, I, I hear a lot of people dislike the green, but I prefer it. Um, I actually shut off uh, the iMessage because I dislike the tones. Uh, I was doing that for a while, but then I found that because I can go into grayscale, which I'll show you in just a second, all of the text messages are gray. So it solves that problem. Now everybody looks the same. Everybody's gray. Everybody's legible. It just makes way, way, way more sense. Just everybody being the same tone. Now the thing with the grayscale is it gets annoying. Sometimes you want to use the color and then to go into setting and then accessibility and then change the thing. It's really annoying just to see, say, a photo. So if I'm going into photos, I want to quickly see what's going on here. Uh, it's kind of cumbersome and odd looking at black and white photos on your phone. So what I've done to combat this is I've set up a shortcut in the power button. So it's a triple tap, so I go one, two, three, and it goes to color mode. Now, now this is great because I can just hop back and forth. I can do what I need to do and then go back home. And then all these colors just drive me crazy. I don't like it. So I can just go one, two, three, and go back to the grayscale and it's perfect. That's the next thing is home screen. I do not keep anything on the home screen. It bothers me. It makes me feel just annoyed to see stuff all over it. Keep everything right here. It's, it's all right there. Now what I have here in the bottom is a bunch of apps that I use basically with one hand, such as like hitting like location for driving or if it's an alarm clock, I can just reach for it one hand. Uh, podcast again, just changing track uh, just with one hand if I'm driving or scanning some barcode with my Fitness Pal. 
things like that. Just, it's really, really bare, but the reason why I keep them in a shortcut and not just have them over here is just that quick operation with one hand. A lot of people have a lot of social media and stuff like that, and it's not like I don't have it, I just don't keep it on my phone. It doesn't make sense for me. I just do everything at a specific time and a certain time of day. The phone doesn't need to have that. I can just do everything from my computer. If I need to post or do some sort of thing with Instagram, I have an iPad that I can do from there. Now to the left, I have three things here because I can't get rid of this page. If you guys know how to get rid of it, uh, I would love to figure that out. But I have just data. So I have steps, I have the weather, and the time of use. Uh, I really don't use that my phone all too much. You'll notice I'm usually under 45 minutes to an hour every single day because I keep it so bare. And that's one of the benefits of minimalism. It's great, you don't go on your phone just randomly and just mess around on Instagram. You don't have it on there, so you can't do that. So you live in the real world and, and you just do things in your real life. You don't mess around. So. That's really the home screen right there. It's the one and operation, and then all my apps here, which quickly I'll just browse through them. It's, it's podcasts and music. I use Amazon Music because it's free, included in Amazon Prime. Uh, I basically only listen to classical music, uh, at least on my phone, and it's generally free on Amazon Music. Like there's a lot of stuff that it's just kind of annoying. Oh, you want to listen to a new, new pop album? No, you got to pay for that. But there's so much free stuff, and I actually listen to audiobooks and podcasts more than I listen to music. So that's that's just, I'm not going to bother with Spotify. I don't want to pay for another service. It just makes no sense to me. Uh, then weather. I have some health stuff because that's probably one of the most important things in life is your health, so fitness battle and your steps. And then email, I would love to get rid of it, but I want to make sure that I, I can, if somebody's looking for work, I'd love to be able to respond to get the job. Obviously phone and messaging. Uh, and then I have my photos and on the phone itself. And then the photos app from Google, which is just the cloud. Uh, then I have a Sony app so I can record and film myself for all the YouTube videos and, and stuff like that. Uh, then just an alarm clock. Uh, then there's just like utilities. These, I wish I could turn off Find My and Wallet. I, if I could delete those, great. Uh, that's the walkthrough. The final thing is in this drawer here, this control panel. I just have a couple things here, as you can see. If you can figure out how I can shut off screen monitoring, delete that in this not now playing thing, I would love to hear from you if there's a trick or way to do that. But that's the internal of the phone. Now, lastly, I just want to talk about this case because it's so badass. Uh, the art is done by my brother. This is my case for my other channel, The Carry Chronicles. It's all about EDC stuff and gear and all that fantastic, awesome stuff that we all like. Uh, this is one of my first products I've ever really made. So I teamed up with my brother to make this and it's awesome. Went through some revisions and the print is perfect. Very, very detailed, very, very nice texture. And it's a perfect height around the cameras because the way that the iPhone is made, if you don't have a case, it's a fragile back, it's very fingerprint magnet, and when you put it down, it places the, the camera edge right onto the table. And that happened with my Pixel, and that actually broke the camera lens on my Pixel, just putting it down on a table one time. So you kind of need to have a case for this phone for iPhones because of that weird protruding camera and then the thing with this is because the iPhone 12 has that new glass it's actually very resistant to shattering but it's very very soft and it detracts scratches much more easily uh, so I put a tempered glass I'll put that in the description the one I've found it's really nice and this lip just kind of rolls right into the tempered glass with just a tiny, tiny bit of an, like overlap so that you can put it straight on the face and not even scratch up the tempered glass. Even though it's, for a while, I just had the tempered glass and had it on the tempered glass. I often put my, fi my phone face down. Uh, I don't know why, but it just prevents me from checking my phone all the time and just zoning out and working. Uh, and this just looks so badass on my desk. So 
I really, really love this case so much. It feels really good in the hand and it keeps the phone from making too much noise when I put it on a table because it has that little bit of rubberiness to it. It's grippy on the edges and the, there's this nice little lip here on the back, uh, which when you put it on the back, it's not rubbing against the case. So it's just overall an awesome case. I'm really happy with it. So I hope this inspires you to maybe find a new way to use your phone because it doesn't have to be your thing that you carry everything on. You can have, you can actually post and check out Instagram on the computer, both on web and there's apps on, on the computers. Uh, you can do stuff from your iPad. You don't need everything on your phone and you can live in the real world much better. You don't have to do everything here. That's my advice to you. Get rid of all the apps or place them somewhere else. That's it. Hope that helps. So there you go. That's the iPhone 12 mini uh, minimalist tour and setup. I approached it very utilitarian, trying to make the phone just a tool in my life, not a part of it. It's really, really made my life uh, a lot better because I just don't spend as much time on my phone in a given day. And when I'm on a computer, which is most of the day, it's very intentional. And if I use my iPad, it's a very intentional break. I'm sitting in a chair and I'm editing photos or something like that. I hope this helps and inspires you in some way. And uh, yeah, until next time, cheers. So there's nothing really more on here but that. And then uh, I do wanna to touch on the wallpaper because I'm super proud of it. So I'm very, very happy. There was a few challenges. There's the challenge of the bottom banner drawer thing. Can't hide it, it's always permanent. And then the notch. And this one, to hide the notch, you need it black. But a full black background is extremely boring. It's kind of, it's too minimalist, I think. And then uh, when it is black, it's just black. And then you have this thing that steals your eye on the bottom of this drawer that I can't figure out how to make it disappear. Uh, so it's permanent. And the thing is, when you put something light behind it, it goes dark. If it could put something dark behind it, it goes lighter. So what I've done is I've created a value that's almost nearly identical to the value of the bottom drawer right before it flips and gets darker or brighter. So that's that level of gray. And then I have it fade to black to completely hide the notch which actually causes a problem on the screen. It causes it banding at this resolution of iPhones. So I had to add a, another texture onto it and it was this really nice, really like nice kind of noise and texture that I've added so that it doesn't band, it's just super, super smooth. And it's very, very nice to the eye. And it doesn't, you can't tell whether I'm in color mode or grayscale. Yep, so that's that.